And welcome back. Getting young people interested in science, technology, engineering and mathematics related fields is not an easy task, but author Dr. Tabani Mazibuko has taken this task head on in his latest book, Life Beyond the Common Line, Outer Space. In it, he takes readers on an exploratory journey of the wonder of the vast outer space. Dr. Tabani Mazibuko now joins us. Dr. Mazibuko, good evening. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on publishing what is an extraordinary offering to the science world, especially young minds in the science world. But my first curiosity is about the title uh, of the book, Life uh, Around the Common Line. Talk to us about why that was very specifically uh, the title. I know it has a role in the book around very specifically where the Earth's atmosphere ends and the beginning of outer space. Why was that such a curious space for you to start the conversation in the book? Greetings, uh, greetings to you and to the viewers at home. Uh, life beyond the common line, outer space. You will remember that uh, the common line is 100 kilometers above the sea level. So there is life there because that is where uh, there is number of uh, space activities happening there. So this organization, South African Space Tech Foundation, has been uh, doing number of outreach programs, uh, workshops, and participating in different hackathons, uh, focusing on uh, space technology, robotics, coding, uh, visual reality, and and other activities. So uh, from there, we've launched a, a book called Mango the Space Boy, which is the first book because we wanted to add to the body of knowledge about space technology with an intention to stimulate interest to young ones to participate in space science and technology so that they can respond to social economic challenges facing this country. So that book was launched in Deben, the first one. It was launched again in Chicago and Washington, D.C. in the U.S. Then after that, uh, uh, we saw that because that was a, a fiction, then we developed a, a, a non-fiction book now that is guiding youth on a on, on number of space activities, space probes and space uh, crafts so that they can now understand space technology and our mission uh, as a country and other countries well, like in different uh, planets. So now we are taking the readers to go with us to the space journey so that they can now directly participate to this science and, and innovation in South Africa and uh, the whole the, the, the world. My first encounter, Dr. Mazibuko, with the outer space uh, exploration and the space world was when I went to as a eight, nine-year-old to the planetarium for the very first time on the University of the Witwatersrand campus. Luckily, that planetarium is now opening up again and will be open to the public next year. But that was the first time I saw, I looked up into the roof and saw the solar system and saw mm. those constellations and it made me curious and it made me engaged in outer space to the point where I in fact wanted to become an astrologer. Uh, yeah. Perhaps the question I want to ask you here is how do you capture eight, nine-year-old, ten-year-old minds into being curious about space and exp space exploration? Thank you. Uh, we've been participating in a number of uh, space activities. I'm one uh, of, of the youth that was uh, stimulated by visiting different space museums and science centers. So now, as I'm going to schools, uh, I see uh, youth uh, uh, participating and curious about space activities. So I said, no, let me bring key activities uh, that are engaging, uh, space activities that are engaging uh, with, with, with our youth. So we are going to different schools where we are exposing youth, in, uh, if, even the young ones, as, as early as because the first book is from uh, children at the age of four to eight years. So that is how far we can go. Then now we are targeting 12 upward because uh, we, that is a, a good age for them to understand or to inspire them. So we are using this space to inspire them as, as early as that. Yeah, you specifically tie your literature to the sustainable development goals of uh, the United Nations and UNESCO, very specifically uh, goal number four of the SDG goals, which focus on ensuring inclusive and equitable education, quality education, and to promote lifelong learning. Talk to us about why that is a focus for you and in your literature production. Thanks. You see, space technology is not just designed for us to, to pass it as a subject, but space technology uh, is designed 
to solve social economic challenges. So now social economic challenges are now uh, d uh, divided into 17 sustainable development goals. So now we are fo focusing on sustainable development goal number four, which is inclusive and equitable quality education. We believe if we uh, if we expose our youth to space science and technology, uh, we've seen space and science capabilities in in, in coming up with new uh, inventions with in, in, in new activities that can be used to change the social economic outlook of this country. And that's where we're going to have to leave it for now, Dr. Tabani. Thank you so much and all the best with not just the book, but also the various programs that you're undertaking across schools and centers in the country, getting young minds to engage in the wonder of science and space exploration. Dr. Tabani Mazibuko, the author of Life at the Common Line, Outer Space. Thank you so much for joining us.